Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can use breakout rooms in Zoom video conferencing. First off, what are breakout rooms? Well, with a breakout room, you can split your Zoom meeting into smaller groups. And then at the end of the breakout room session, you can have people rejoin your main Zoom meeting. I'm gonna show you two different ways you could set up breakout rooms. One of them is while you already have a meeting in progress, you could go ahead and you could assign people to a breakout room. And then I also wanna show you how you could assign people to a breakout room ahead of time. Sound good? Well, why don't we jump on the PC and I'll show you how to take advantage of breakout rooms. Here I am on my PC and to turn on breakout rooms, we need to head over to the website zoom.us. And so you just navigate to that website that'll drop you on the homepage and go ahead and sign in to Zoom. Now I'm already signed in, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click over here in the top right hand corner on my account. Once I land in the My Account screen, what I wanna do is I wanna turn on breakout rooms and to do that, I need to navigate down to settings, click on settings over on the left hand side and this will bring up a very wide variety of settings. Now the quickest way to get to breakout rooms is over on the left hand side, you have navigation within all the different settings and what we wanna do is click on the option that says in meeting or advanced settings and this will drop me all the way down on the page to my advanced settings. And one of the things that you'll see here is the second setting under advanced settings is breakout room. And once again, that allows the host to split meeting participants into separate smaller rooms. Now this is really good if you want smaller groups to say work on a project or to do brainstorming and then come back to the broader group and share what some of their findings were when they went off into the smaller group uh, setting. Now to turn on breakout rooms, by default it's turned off. What you could do is click on this toggle here. So when I have the toggle set that way to the left, it's turned off. When I click it again and you see the blue color there, that indicates that the toggle or that breakout rooms are turned on. So in this case, I have breakout rooms turned on now. You'll also see an option under breakout rooms that says allow host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. Essentially what this means is you have the ability to assign people to breakout rooms ahead of time before people join the meeting. I think it's a nice thing to enable. There's really no downside to enabling it. So you could go ahead and check that box if you want to have that capability. And once you do this, you now have the ability to create breakout rooms. I have a meeting here already in progress in Zoom and I have four of my esteemed colleagues in here. We have Adele, Lydia, Nestor, and Pradeep and we're coming together to solve some of the most challenging problems and today we're going to talk about space elevators. Now I think using breakout rooms will be a perfect way to generate some really rich ideas and who knows maybe we'll have a good breakthrough here today. Now to create a breakout room one of the first things to know is only the host or the co-host can create a breakout room and in this case you see me on top of this list. I'm one of the hosts of the session so I can create a breakout room but Adele, Lydia, Nestor, or Pradeep they're unable to create a breakout room. Now to create a breakout room in a meeting that's already in progress, all I need to do is hover over on the screen and I get my control bar that appears down here. And if you've used Zoom a whole bunch, you'll notice now that there's a new option down here called breakout rooms. The reason this appears here is because previously we went into the settings screen and we toggled this on, which now allows us to use breakout rooms. Let's go ahead and click on this and see what we can do. Now by default, you're gonna see a, a dialog that that looks like this. It'll say how many participants you have in the meeting aside from the host. And so there are four participants in this meeting. And then I could say how many rooms I wanna create. So I could create anywhere from one room all the way up to 50 rooms. 50 is the max number of rooms that I can create. Uh, in this case, one wouldn't make very much sense because that's the same as the larger room that we're currently in, but here I could define how many rooms I wanna create. In this case, I simply wanna create two rooms and it does the math for me where it takes the number of participants, divides the number of rooms, and here it tells me that there will be two participants per room. Now, I have two other options with these radio buttons. I could either automatically assign people to rooms, so Zoom will take care of figuring out who goes in which rooms for me, or I can manually 
assign. I'll show what both of those look like. First off, I'm gonna click on automatically and then I'll click on recreate rooms. Here you see that Zoom has taken a stab at assigning people to different rooms. So I have Adele and Pradeep in breakout room one and then I have Liv Lydia and Nestor in breakout room two. Now if I go back to recreate, I could also click on manual here and then I'll recreate it. And here you'll see that no one's assigned by default and I could click on assign and then I could choose who goes into which room. And so there I've assigned people to each one of the rooms. But if you don't really care who goes into which room, you could just let Zoom do it automatically for you. Now, once you have everyone listed in your breakout rooms, a few of the things that you could do is, you know, maybe you're you're dissatisfied with who's in what room and you wanna make some tweaks to it. If you hover over a name, you could also move someone to a different room. So here I could take Adele and I can move her to breakout room two, and maybe I move Pradeep to breakout room one. So a quick way where you can move people to different breakout rooms. You can also do an exchange. If I click on exchange, here I could take Nestor and maybe I swap him with Lydia, and that'll just do a swap between those uh, two rooms. So it really gives you lots of control to tweak who belongs in which room. One of the other things I could do is up here, if I hover over the title of the breakout room, I could rename the breakout room. So maybe breakout room one is kind of a generic boring name and I could give it a new name. In this case, I'll just leave it like that for now, but you do have the ability to rename uh, different breakout rooms. Down below, some of the other options that I have, I can add an additional room. Let's say I wanted a third room because maybe you know some of the rooms are too full, so I could add an additional room here, uh, and then I could assign people to that room. Although in this case, it's a pretty small group, so I don't need a third room, and I'll simply go ahead and now delete this room. Some of the options that I have that I wanna show here, some of the things that I can do is I can move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. I like that idea. This way, if I kick off the breakout room session, it'll simply move people uh, and they don't have to take any action to end up in the breakout room. One of the things too is I can allow participants to return to the main session at any time. So let's say that they go off and they brainstorm, they come up with some great ideas, but they don't have any more ideas. They could come back to the main session on their own. I could indicate when the breakout room closes. So by default here, it's set to 15 minutes, but however long I want the brainstorming session to go on for, I could customize the time here. Right down here, I could get a notification when the time is up. That's probably good. You know, I'll have people off brainstorming. Maybe I take a little break and I wanna be reminded when it's time to resume the activity. And then here I could also show a countdown after closing the breakout room. And I could set different times on here all the way from 10 seconds to two minutes. I'm gonna go with 10 seconds. Basically what this means is when I close the breakout room, everyone within the breakout rooms will see a countdown timer for when the session officially ends. Those are some of the settings I have. What I wanna do now now is let's go ahead and open all the rooms and we'll see everyone leave this main session and join the breakout rooms. One of the things that you'll see on here, these green dots indicate if someone has successfully joined the breakout room. And in this case now, everyone has a green dot and they have all successfully joined the breakout room. I see a timer up here. This is the time I set within the options. And I said these breakout rooms will be a 15 minute session. Once the breakout room is in progress, some of the things I could do, I can still move people if I'd like. Here I could hover over Lydia and I can move her to perhaps breakout room two and so I can move people around. And as the host, maybe I wanna jump in and see how the breakout rooms are progressing and I can go ahead and join a session. session. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's join and see what Lydia and Pradeep are up to. Here I just joined the session and when I click over on participants, I see that I am now in the room with Lydia and Pradeep. So maybe I answer a question, maybe I help them with uh, some uh, blocker that they're encountering. And once I'm done helping them out, what I could do is once again, I could leave the room by clicking on this down here. When I leave the room, I could end meeting for all, leave the meeting or just leave the breakout room. In this case, I just wanna leave the breakout room. So I'll click on that and now it'll return me to the main session. Now that I'm back in the main session, one of the things that you'll see is that there's no other participant here. That's because all of the other participants are now in breakout rooms. To get the breakout room controls back on, I simply hover over the main screen again and I could click on the breakout rooms icon right down here. And once again, it'll show me how much time is left and then who's in what breakout room. Now let's say I said, hey, we're gonna have 15 minutes for this exercise, but maybe I want people to come back together because I think they've had enough time. I could click on broadcast a message to all and then I could type in a message and maybe I say something like wrap up soon. 
Once I type my message, I click on broadcast and this will send it out to all of the individual breakout rooms. So this is my way that I could still communicate with everyone even though I'm not in the individual breakout rooms. And once we're done with the session, I'm gonna go ahead and click on close all rooms and then we'll see everyone rejoin the main session. So one of the things you'll see down here, I set a 10 second timer to give people some notice that their breakout room is closing. And so once that goes down to zero, you're gonna see everyone reappear on our list here. And so slowly everyone makes their way back into the main session. And now, now that everyone's rejoined, we could talk about any ideas that they might've come up with. Here I am back on the zoom.us website and now I wanna show you how you could pre-assign people to a breakout room and to pre-assign people to a breakout room, we're gonna click over on my account and once we're in my account, let's click on the meetings option on the left-hand side and within meetings, what I'll see is here's my space elevator brainstorming session. So let's say that I was really on top of things and I wanted to pre-assign people. I could do that as well. So I'm gonna click on this meeting here. And as I scroll down, I'm gonna go and edit this meeting. You could also do this when setting up a new meeting. If I scroll down the page, one of the things that you'll see is under meeting options, there's an option that says breakout room pre-assign. Let me go ahead and check this box. And here now I have two different options. I could either create rooms or I could import from CSV. I'll show you how both of these work. So first off, I could click on create rooms and this pops up a dialogue where I could both create rooms and then assign participants to those rooms. So in this case, let me click on the plus and so now I have breakout room one and now I type in an email address of someone who I want in breakout room one, and I'll just go ahead and type in an email address here, and once you type it in, you hit enter, and I'll type in a second person into this breakout group, and what I could do is I could go down and I could create any number of rooms, and I could assign people to those rooms. Now, typing everything in manually could take a bit of time, and to make you more efficient, you might wanna have a spreadsheet that already contains all of this information, and to do that, I could click on this import from CSV. Similarly, what you could also do is directly here on the main page, I could also click on import from CSV, and as an example of what this file looks like, they have a template here. So I'm gonna download this template and let's take a look at how to upload this. Here is the template that popped up and it's a very simple file. All you do is there are two different columns that you have. One of them is the pre-assigned room name and here you can have any number of rooms that you define over here. And then in the second column under email address, here's where you type in the different email addresses that will go in those various rooms. And once you're done entering this, you simply save it as a CSV. So here in this case, I'm in Excel. You could go to save as and save it as a CSV. CSV file type. Once you're done creating your CSV, what I can do is I can drag and drop it here and that'll upload it. Alternatively, I can also click on browse and that'll bring up a file picker where I can choose the file. Once again, they call out that you could have up to 50 breakout rooms with up to a total of 200 participants. And that's how you create a breakout room ahead of time. All right, well that was a quick example of how you can both create and then also use breakout rooms in Zoom video conferencing, how you can create them when you have a meeting that's already ongoing, and also how you could assign people ahead of time. If this video helped you learn how you can use breakout rooms, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other ideas in the future, leave a comment down below. I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Bye.